Hey guys, let's talk about tonight's episode of Arrow, and we pretty much pick up right where we left off. Um, Slade's men are running rampant throughout Starling City. They are killing everybody in sight. It is craziness. Um, remember back in a, a few episodes ago when uh, Slade told Oliver that one more person needs to die in order for all of this to be complete? Well, I have a feeling that we're talking about Sarah. And that makes me very, very sad because I do not want to see her go. I like her character. I like her. I like her with Oliver. And after what it felt like, you know, them almost saying goodbye to her in this episode, like she was saying, I'm not a hero. You know, I don't deserve any of this. And then at the end, when she rescues the, the, the young child in the fire, and then you overhear the police officer say, oh, a young girl, a, a woman with a mask and a blonde wig um, rescued a little girl. Oh, my goodness, she's a hero. And it's just sort of like that moment where she finally gets to hear somebody else say that she's a hero. And it's like this moment of like, ah, oh, isn't that sweet? And now you just know she's toast, okay? <laughs> That's all I was thinking. Sarah is donezo. Uh, no. Please say it ain't so, because I do not want to see that happen. Um, uh, Sebastian Blood is definitely done, though. He got <laughs> two swords to the chest, thanks to Isabel, and she was just crazy in this episode. She didn't even, like, bat two eyes. She just stabbed him right in the chest. Obviously, she did this because he stole the um, Mirakuru cure from Slade and Slade is not having any of that. I don't know how Sebastian Blood thought he was really going to walk away with that case and give it to Oliver and then have nothing happen to him. I mean, even when he was saying, you know, when I'm going to be mayor and Oliver was like, really, you think you're still going to be mayor after all this? And he's like, oh, they don't know anything about this. And, you know, if you tell anybody about my mask, I'll tell everybody about your mask and Oliver was pretty much like, do what you need to do what you gotta do. But in my mind, I was like, Slade is going to kill you. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. He's on the phone with him and he doesn't even say anything. He just says, Goodbye, Sebastian, and boom, he's gone. So will we see him again? I highly doubt it. Maybe he put some of that miracle system in him before he was stabbed and maybe he'll come back to life. I don't know. You never know with this show because they like to do all these little twists and turns. Speaking of which. Malcolm Merlin re returned in this episode just in the nick of time to save his daughter Thea and of course Thea was like completely crazed she first of all thought he was dead and she was in complete shock when she saw that he revealed himself as being alive and of course he says you know I'm here for my daughter and he's trying to say listen you've lost everything I've lost everything you're all I have left and you know, come with me and I'll keep you safe. And she's basically <laughs> terrified. She thinks of him as a terrorist and this man who did all these horrible things. And right at the end of the episode, which is pretty awesome, she's holding the gun on him. And, you know, he's basically begging for her to give him a chance. And without fail, boom, boom, you hear two gunshots go off and it cuts to the arrow tag. <laughs> so, we're supposed to assume she shot her father twice, but I have a feeling somebody rolled up behind Daddy Dearest and she shot that person instead. I don't think she's really going to shoot her only dad that she has left. So we'll see what happens when the show returns with that big uh, shock and awe moment there. Um, I do like what they've done with Laurel in these last few episodes. They've definitely made her less annoying. You know, now that she knows the truth about Oliver and her sister Sarah, you know, she has this great moment where um, Sarah grabs her hand at, dressed as Canary and she grabs her and, and they're running down this alleyway and then she stops and she looks at her and I'm like, thank God she finally says it because, hello... She looks exactly like her sister. She's just wearing a black mask and a, a, like a blonder wig. And um, she says, Sarah? And so, you know, it was a nice little sigh of relief for Sarah because now she's, she can stop lying to her sister. And so I thought that was a good moment. And then, of course, the scene that they had after that where she was pretty much telling her sister, Sarah was saying to, um, to, to Laurel, like, you know, I don't know why I came back. I have nothing left here for me. You know, I don't. I shouldn't even be here. She basically is saying she doesn't deserve to be loved, a family. And she's and she, she says what her name is, and I can't quite remember it. But what it means is canary. 
And so, you know, her and her sister have a really touching scene and she pretty much just tells her, like people wouldn't, if people didn't care about you, they wouldn't have given you such a beautiful name as Canary. So, you know, in my mind that made me go, yay, let's hopefully um, Sarah will live on and her and Oliver will do some serious damage. But towards the latter part of this episode, I am just thinking Sarah is not long for this world. <laughs> so, and if that happens, I will be very, very sad. Um, so, of course, you know, Oliver's even thinking like, who else would... Um, Slade want to kill because he's already killed my mother, you know, and Sebastian even says to him He's gonna kill who you love the most and who's left. He had an opportunity to kill his sister um, Thea so to me that would only leave Sarah because Slade knows that he chose Sarah back in the day on the island So and they're still together thick as thieves So that would be the person that if he killed her it would torture and kill Oliver just as much. I don't know. I don't want to see that happen. Um, so Quentin finally got to become detective again, and he was doing his thing in the precinct. Um, lots of little side stories, stuff going on. Um, There's a nice scene where Felicity ran over crazy Isabel. Is, I believe her name's Isabel, right? Uh, at the beginning of the of the episode, <laughs> and she uh, she's like, "Oh man, I thought the I definitely thought the airbags were gonna." <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was, you know, some good little comic relief. But of course, you know, later on in the episode, um, Felicity's completely freaked out. She, you know, is trying to tell Oliver that he will he will be able to save the city. He's done it before. He'll be able she'll be he will be able to take down Slade and she believes in him. So, you know, some really touching scenes from all the characters because at the end of the day, like this is literally doomsday. And by the end of the episode, we see that all this military um, has has descended on Starling City. And Oliver realizes that it is Amanda and her gang from Argus. And uh, Amanda's basically like, listen, you've already told me that one person with this Mirakuru can do so much damage. Do you really think that I'm going to let all these people get out of Starling City and what could they do to the to, to the world, to the, the rest of the country. So, you know, she basically gives um, Oliver an ultimatum and she's like, you have until sundown to try to get to, to, to give this serum to Slade or else she's coming in with her her people and she's just basically going to drop bombs over Baghdad. She's going to bomb up Starling City and all 500,000 people that live there. So... The time is um, definitely ticking down, and we will see what happens next. I mean, gosh, so much carnage in this episode. Lots of fighting. I think one of my favorite scenes was when Sebastian Bud really thought he had power. He's in his office, and he's talking to the district attorney, and he's all like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to take this on together. You're with me, right? And she's kind of standing there like, oh, okay, I guess, because I don't know what the heck's going on. And then... When Mr. Crazy Mirakuru dude comes into the office, uh, Sebastian's all like, hey, this is what's going on here. You know, stand down, you know, and he's got the district attorney in the headlock and he's like, let, let her go. And he's like, breaks her neck, drops her on the floor. He's like, I don't take orders from you. And that was the moment when Sebastian Blood was like, uh, <laughs> um, maybe I'm not going to have any power in this situation after all. And it's like, hello, do you not realize who Slate is? Slate is literally going to destroy Starling City just so that he can get all this revenge back on Oliver. It's crazy. It's completely crazy. So we had some flashbacks to the island. And once again, Oliver went and saved Sarah. Sarah would refuse to leave, leave his side. And then they end up in this standoff with um, Slade at the end and he's holding up the serum, the cure, and he's like, are you looking for this? And, um, you know, that's their standoff moment. So obviously we're going to see what ultimately happens at the end of that, how Slade got away, how Oliver thought that Slade and Sarah were both dead. All that should definitely be coming up in next week's episode as we uh, are at the finale next week. I'm expecting it to be just as explosive as, the, as these last few episodes have been. It's been some good television, guys. I'm very excited to see what happens next week. And who's going to survive? I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> Please let Sarah survive. Please. <laughs>
I really want her to, but I don't know. I don't know. They made Laurel, you know, look good with the bow and arrow in this episode, so I'm hoping that they're not trying to say, see, we can make Laurel into this big fighter and take after her sister. No, I don't want to see that. Anyways, all right, guys, let me know what you thought of this episode. Leave a comment down below, down below like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Bye.